wicked, 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 wicked. Wicked tones, you know what I'm saying? It's more like people have asked to see my, like see me train more and just kind of the stuff that I do. Not that it's gonna be anything impressive weight-wise or anything crazy, but you know, it's just kind of showing how I would structure like a chest workout that I would do, right? So like I have, I have issues with my shoulders. People who, who write me, they have issues with their shoulders or different issues, right? So just kind of show you, you guys how I structure what I do and kind of incorporate some more basic stuff, like not using some of the advanced stuff in the gym. I'm still gonna use certain things because I'm not gonna fuck up my workout on account of a video. I'm gonna try and incorporate today like some Smith machine stuff and some dumbbells. We'll just go along. But the thing is I always start with with some type of fly and a press just to open myself up. So a lot of people when they do their flies, they're trying to get like this maximum reach back with their shoulder and then like, so this maximum stretch and then maximum contraction. But the idea is, especially people who have shoulder issues, is to kind of lock into lat and then understand like the sink of my shoulders that I can have when my shoulders are retracted or my palms can hold the weight. So I'm not here in my shoulder and being pulled back and have this shoulder rolled forward. I just want to be where I can tuck in and slide in. So I want to control the tempo back to where I was and slide in. So just work a shorter, more controlled range where we're still opening on hands and then we're pressing on hands through just to kind of open things up. So yeah, so I'm squeezing mid back together. I'm pinching my traps and my shoulders are tucked in low and I'm squeezing the pad with my mid back and like upper, upper trap a little bit and I'm moving through my hands. So that's how I can control my negative is because I'm retracting in my back, hands are catching and then I'm squeezing through. So just trying to get warm and get blood into the muscle or just tuck into like how we do on every press. My head's never gonna really bang on this. I'm kind of locked in where I can hold my shoulders again, where I'm locked in where my shoulders can tuck. I don't want to be so low they do that. I want to be able to stay here and drive through. So I control negatives, press out on hands. So my momentum goes back into that seat and drive out. Yeah, everything's always mid back. It's never, it's never traps, it's never shoulders. There's, t there's a time and a place for that for you to be pinched up high and coming around wide. There's a, like, I physically can't do that without pain, so I don't do that. But it's also smart to not do that because you're too much weight out there is going to generate, like, a shearing effect, almost like a rolling over. Because if I'm so wide, I can't possibly throw my lats around without throwing my shoulders over. So my shoulders are doing everything, right? I don't want to work shoulders. My shoulders are good. I don't need them. I'm trying to do chest today. It's like all these muscles that people are like, oh, you don't want to hit shoulders. You don't want to like all that stuff's still going to get hit. There's no way of like just training chest like we've talked about before. Other muscles are going to have to work for you to hit chest properly. It's fucking idiotic to think that you can work chest without working tricep or shoulder or back or what. We're just trying to limit the tension, limit the force used by those accessory muscles or the muscles that are helping and just put more load and more tension on the actual pec, right? But in order to keep tension on the pec, I have to control my hand. I have to control my negative in my back. I have to squeeze into my back and roll my shoulders down and lift my chest. That in itself is engaging four, five, six, seven different muscles. So, right? And not to mention where our head is. So I'm controlling my head posture, where my chin is, how much I rock up through things, right? Nothing to do with the more rigid you stay, the more you're going to work chest. It's like, yeah, well, it's also not, you're also not going to be able to do much weight. You're also not going to have much flow and movement to your body, right? To be like, when people do the negative on this, it doesn't need to be this like, like controlling, controlling, and then controlling, controlling. It's like, if you see my negative slow and then I try and squeeze slow, it, it's exerting. Like I have to flex in and people think, oh, cause I flexed hard something happening. Like I'm still holding this weight and I'm talking to you. So obviously I'm not straining myself, right? Because I know where to put the weight. So I'm just moving through my palms, squeezing through. It's the same feeling as like a, like a hook in boxing. When guys throw hooks, they don't, guys don't throw their hook and be like, Ink. it's just boom. You move your, 
you hook over, right? Or any type of throw you do in baseball, it's like I'm not gonna think about the mechanics of my throw and throw the ball. I get the last second go. It's like, no, it's a whole flow of things and I throw the ball, right? Thing on like, on presses that converge, like obviously this press is converging as it goes in. You can see that it starts out wide and it ends up in the middle. It's like, don't press on that the same way you press on something that's moving straight ahead. So I wanna feel like I'm pulling a cross chest, squeezing into mid. I wanna retract shoulders and drive through to mid chest. I'm on that path, so that's how I wanna push. It's like on the fly, I'm coming around. I don't wanna all of a sudden be like, and cave in. I wanna follow the path of that arc, right? It's another thing too, at the bottom, people are in such a rush, like you wanna be able to hang out here. I wanna be able to feel that tension across my pec, move when I decide to. So I need to be embracing this area and being able to hold and lock down, feel that stretch, move, move. I'm not in this like, I'm not in this massive rush to like get the reps done. And like, cause people, when they get to the bottom and you tell them to hold, you tell them to unhook at the bottom and just hold the weight there. It's an instant panic mode. It's complete and utter panic because they think, oh, I'm gonna tear something. Like this stretching feeling, this being open feeling makes people think that something bad's gonna happen. And there's the root of the problem because that's not, the root, that's not what's happening and that's what you wanna feel. If you never feel that deep stretch and that deep like pull across and tension in your chest, you're not training it. This is part of the workout. I saw this video on a bodybuilding channel that will remain nameless. Lord knows why I was watching it. I must have been fucking so bored. It's like make, basically making fun of or like calling out certain bodybuilders, one or two of them, who have like put on excessive size and like are like in their off season and are massive motherfuckers. Like I'm talking like top in the sport. Yeah. And these guys are like almost like, the guy who's critiquing is literally like given up on being big ever. Just wants to be some pretty boy or something. I don't know what his deal is, but... Like you understand, if you're a bodybuilder, whether you're Olympia level, amateur level, whatever, it's like, it's this forgotten thing that like, we have to put on size to get better. So our muscle has to come up for us to get better, not just our weight. So it's not a, like a, a race to get to like 300 pounds, whatever it might be. The weight is what it is. The weight is fucking, doesn't matter. We're trying to get the fucking muscle to come up. In order for that to happen, the gear needs to go to a certain level and the effort needs to go to even a certain level to accommodate that gear. So you can't be on a shit ton of gear and then train like a fucking bitch. Train like a natty motherfucker or like how you used to train when you were being like in bitch mode and didn't want to train hard. But now, oh, there's the juice will make up for it. Like now the workout I'm doing, now the work I'm doing will actually be doing something. So I don't need to train hard anymore because now I got this juice in me. It's like, no, when the juice is in and it's high, you have to train even fucking harder, man. Nothing's gonna happen unless you train harder. Your little look the fucking same. Like, I can't, I don't understand where that's been lost in this, in this bodybuilding world. Like this whole idea of fucking just being a complete and utter bitch. Like not understanding, that, like you need, you might need to put on some weight. You might need to get a little puffy. If you really want to make improvements in this sport, because that's the name of the game, man. You don't put on solid muscle unless you're in a caloric surplus. If you're running a deficit all the time or just above what it takes to maintain you, just so you can be pretty for your Instagram photos and like be fucking photo shoot ready year round, like that's all cool and shit. You make your money that way, then do that. But I'm talking like top tier bodybuilders, like they're gonna get out of shape a bit, man. They're gonna get round, poofy, look kind of fucking awkward because then the next season rolls around and those same guys you were making fun of who are like way too big, this is scary, this is scary. They walk on stage and kill everybody. And then you're like, how did he do it? Like, <laughs> hello. Turn, turning bodybuilding into like absolute, it's like we're blending other sports with bodybuilding and like this whole like Instagram culture has just made bodybuilders so conscious of their appearance and like so over like sensitive to comments they get about their appearance, right? that it's like dumbed down their progress. And the guys that ignore it, they excel. And the guys that are like mentally weak, they don't get better, man. No, it's because
because if I make like one comment about like some one thing pertaining to a specific idea, it's just like everyone, like I just broad stroked it. I fucking hate dumbbells and I hate barbells. It's like, it's like lost it on some guy who's a follower of mine. He's like, he's a nice guy. I forget his screen name to be honest, so that's not good. But he's just like, you know, Mike, you shouldn't say that. Blah, blah, blah. Like basically arguing that I told him that dumbbells and barbells don't work. But he's like, I never said that. You heard that. And, you, and from a like a 30 second snippet just looking for like always looking for stuff to like attack or stuff to like oh i heard this now i think now we know he's this way it's like listen to the whole rant or like listen to the whole discussion or even see me training now like i'm using dumbbells i'm doing it today i would use dumbbells anyway sometimes but i'm doing it today to show people who are like oh we don't have the equipment they have at pure at my gym, like these people act like they work out in dungeons. Maybe they do, but it's like you're working out in like your backyard on a fucking with milk crates or something, which is fine if that's what you do. But most of you who are savvy enough to be watching a YouTube channel, obviously probably have a smartphone. Obviously probably have like access to like certain kind of money. You pay your smartphone bill every month. You can join a gym for the same amount of money. Matter of fact, ditch the fucking phone and, or, and join the better gym. I do like basically, uh, I combine the Smith press with the dumbbell press just because I'm not able to overload too much with pressing anymore, especially with a barbell press. And even with a dumbbell press, like I don't feel comfortable doing it, right? Because I've had a pec tear in the past. I've, I have messed up shoulder. So I have all this stuff going on that, you know what I mean? I just want to be able to feel things and really open and close and contract my chest and just kind of work in like a in a way that's conducive to me being able to like get a maximal pump and me to work out as intense as I can because I can't go intense in terms of weight because I'm not going to throw four plates on here like I haven't done that in a long time I'm sure I could do it for maybe one pretty fucking ugly right now but I mean I'd rather just hold that tension and work through the ranges and be comfortable like know where I've set my shoulder know where my sternum is everything's tucked under so i know i have like i'm minimizing my chance of having issues right so as the weight gets heavier the less i'm able to focus on that because i'm i'm over comp i'm over concerned about the load and it's just and on like barbell presses especially like the smith machine i've done a lot of like a lot of instructional stuff on it but it's like you want to almost feel and i think i think it was i don't know who it was i saw talking about this and made me think about it like this I always thought about it this way but I didn't put it into words as well as he did but like Dave Tate was just basically I think he was talking about I want to say it was Dave I don't know if it was Dave or not so I'm sorry if this is someone else said this but either way you're both intelligent smart dudes so but um yeah it's like how I'd say like when you take off I want to basically pin here so I want to I want to be back on this bench head down and completely locked into lat here so I can hold here as long as I want because I'm completely locked on lat, right? So when I pin, when I push off, I'm pinned against this bench. So when the weight comes at me, I'm trying to let this weight, I'm trying to squeeze my shoulder blades back. That's why the bench is so narrow to allow your shoulder blades to, to retract and your chest to lift. If it was too wide, it wouldn't be able to go anywhere. That's why people who press off the floor, I get that you're pushing, you're getting a shorter range of motion but you're also blunting a range of motion that allows the chest to really stretch open. So you think you're protecting your shoulder, but I don't think you are, in my opinion. I think you're causing more of a jarring effect from not being able to like sink and, and fire out, right? So it's the same thing here. I'm gonna pin, I'm gonna pin myself into that seat, push down and lock into my lats here, and I'm gonna fight my head coming up as long as I can. I'm gonna open up that chest and I'm gonna fire, boom. So I'm expanding firing i can't get that full sink and that full lock that full like fire out of the bottom obviously i'll be able to get it with a higher weight because it's gonna force me down but my drive out of the bottom is compromised due to my shoulder mobility right so not to make excuses i really don't give a shit how much i press but it's like after you do a press it's not like you necessarily have to come over to the dumbbells and try and max out again we're only able to push on that straight line with our hands. There's no, no converging, no opening. It's just straight lines up and down, right? Pinning ourselves under the bar. So when you do here, now we can think of more like 
squeezing through pec, dumbbells converging. So it's a different type of squeeze than we just did, right? So if I tuck into lats here and heads up, I can move through lats and press. So my lats contract, my fire lats open, push palms out. I'm just rocking. So I'm holding that tension the whole way down, rocking. Tension, tension, so I don't do this. I'm always here, rocking through. And again, it's like finding your, finding your sticking point that allows you to feel tension. People who tag me in their videos or whatever, they're thinking that the dumbbell just starts here and my shoulder end up their shoulders are like this and their heads down and they go. It's like, no, I'm trying to create tension across my back and feel here like we've discussed. So I'm gonna to come to that point where I almost start to roll over and I'm gonna fire again. So I'm gonna stretch, fire. So I can always fall back under my press and not end up pushing over my press. feeling here is to feel like you're above your hands. So I'm trying to end up in the position that most guys isn't when they do most musculars, right? Or they come through most musculars here. You don't hit most musculars like that. If you do, you're an idiot. You don't know how to pose. You scoop your pec or you hold your, squeeze your pecs together through your biceps, right? Or come down through and pick up, right? To get your chest to project. So that's kind of what we're going for here is like this almost lateral press where I'm coming across my pecs making them jam into the middle, right? As opposed to like this coming around shit. This is all shoulder and like pec insertion. Like people act like they don't get enough pec insertion work. It's like, so you're gonna drive through here and down. So I'm not gonna be able to get up that high, but at my hand, my angle of my hands is down along my pec line. So I'm sweeping underneath my pec and staying up as tall as I can, flexing through. So it's not fast over the top, it's just sinking. And then just keep pressing hands through. So chest stays up in your throat and drive through. And then you can open up, get up into insertion more, use palms and sweep around. So I don't curve my hands at any time, I just sweep palms high. Pull my head back, relax. So when I press, I'm falling away. Just a, just a different variation. A lot of people like they use these attachments or the other one that can like hook onto the hooks. This one's solid. But a lot, of, a lot of people do it so they can stay up tall and they can just flex down, which is fine because you're just flexing through. But you're actually getting no stretch in the tricep. You're just rocking on like a locked tricep. So what I prefer to do is basically make it like the same position we're in when we do a kickback we take like that old school dumbbell workout so we're like one knee down up here even just hold the dumbbell up and rock out because there's a lot more arm swing on that right so i kind of set that so that i'm here and i have my elbows tucked in front of me and my chest is up and i have this angle where i'm pulling down into so i'm able to rock through and rock so my elbow moves forward a bit and then slams back almost like i'm launching through things as opposed to just like squeezing down, right? So I'm able to lock here if I want, drive up through. And I can almost roll my hands a bit more so I can get more roll in my wrist and lock here. So I can turn down and out, almost roll over and hit more outer head as I'm rolling open a bit, turning open. It's like everyone's so concerned like, oh, what, what about your the long head of your tricep and, your, and that? It's like, just work triceps, man. Like, it's not fucking rocket science, guys. You're not even moving well to begin with for you to worry about what head you're hitting. Just try feeling them first. Then if you see that there's areas that are lagging, sure, change your angles, change your posture, find those angles that hit it. And it's like this whole, like, this hits my long head. It's like, does it? Because it doesn't fucking look like it is. Like your triceps suck. Same thing here. People are in a rush. They don't want to hang out here. So I'm off the stack. 
I'm locked into my back. I'm stiff on my palms. My shoulders are back. They're not over. They're back so I can just lean and press. I'm rocking into the press. So it takes me up a bit. I lean through and press. I'm not trying to go. Like it's doing nothing. It's just you being able to push the weight down, which doesn't do shit, right? So just squeeze through. When you get tired, rock. If the range starts to suffer, keep bouncing in the range that you can press in. It's not like you need to get to here and then go, oh, and I got it. It's like you didn't win a prize. You actually won a prize. It's not doing anything anymore. I'd rather have the tension on my tricep and be just moving on my tricep. Like the whole point of, of building muscle is to stretch it as well. So if we're, not a long, if we're not stretching and working like through a range and pulling on that muscle and rocking, we're just like, bang, and then bang. It's like, I'd rather just be breathing with the muscle, letting it pull, relax. So even if that range gets to here, I'm still moving and then it dies, right? It's just people are in such a rush to like, again, this A to B shit. It's like, it starts up here, I end down here. If you start this here and you, and you pull these, so I'm trying to, I'm almost like I'm flexing my bicep. I'm trying to smash my forearm into my bicep. So if I start here and I relax here, this is not a tense position for me. Because my leverage is down in my hands. I'm not trying to be up posture wise, holding this thing here, fighting it all the time and pushing here. I've trapped it and it's in my tricep and my hand, right? So I'm able to just rock through things. So yeah, I'm not postured. I am because my chest is up, but I'm not like arched in my back. So I'm just sweeping through things. So if I get tired, I can rest here and then I can lean through things. So I die, push. So I can extend sets longer. I can sit on tricep longer and rock through it and press. Everyone thinks that this is just like strictly for fucking like getting your triceps beside you and then locking out as hard as you can. Locking out your tricep does not make your tricep grow. Like doing this, squeezing it in this locked out position. It's like, uh, it's like no, stretching the tricep causes pull. Why do you think skull crushers and everything like anything like a skull crusher creates so much stretch and pull so people have hanging, hanging triceps? So when they put their arm like this to the side, you can see their tricep belly, right? That's why guys who have good arms, you see, their, you see the dimension delt tricep, right? So they have this meat because they're used to throwing and stretching through tricep. There's a time and a place for this. Maybe the last few sets, like burnout sets, you're just trying to flood that muscle with blood because it's so ripped up already. But it's like, if you're not rocking and stretching, tricep's gonna be like. So like my shoulders are up. I'm pushing through my shoulders and my hands down. So I'm trying, I'm not trying to roll over ever. I'm just rocking shoulders up push them down, throw hands out, throw hands out, throw hands out. I'd rather die at the top of the range and just bouncing, bouncing, bouncing out of that, out of that depth, rocking, 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 because I'm going to get more tricep than if I just try to like half rep it and pump through. It's great because my tricep shows when I do that. So it must be working, right? That's the same analogy. If I hold my bicep up like this, is it growing? Am I pumping it? So like, yeah, it looks good like that. But like, this is where all the work happens when I'm stretching up into the bicep. So when it's flexed, it looks good. People have thought that not when tricep, just because I can flex it hard, I must be really working it hard. It's like, I could do this 10 times right here, standing here right now, and my tricep will get tired. So like, oh, it must be doing something. But there's no stretch happening. You can't work that, you have to work that stretching range. So skull crushers, if you're someone like me, who has bad shoulders, can't get that range of that elbow rolling back when you're laying down, throwing out. This is an alternative. So I can trap, oh, shit, who put that on there? I put the 25 on? Oh yeah. Yeah, so this is another option, right? So basically I'm starting in here even more contracted than I would be on a skull crusher because the skull crusher would be out here rocking, but now I'm letting my elbow move and I'm squeezing out through. So that elbow is getting pulled forward and I'm sweeping back, sweeping back. So my arms are moving like this. They're rocking through. If I had nothing in my hand, 
I'm doing this as opposed to, which nothing's happening, right? So we're not getting this I'm firing, right? Like a lot of these attachments allow you to find better angles on things, but people are like bodybuilding for dummies. It's like, oh, well, I could never, I could never squeeze my arms directly beside my body and just flex them if with a barbell or, the, or with a bar attachment and never be able to do it. But now I can, so I just squeeze. It's like you've really gone like, really run on a limb, right on a limb with that one. Like, how does this work? Let's think of the most rigid possible way to do it. Like, I see nothing but people on Instagram, different trainers. Some of them are actually really cool. They come up with cool shit. But there's just a lot of people that are just overthinking, man. It's like, you are, you are so fucking bored. And you are so baffled by the way the body actually works that you develop all these crazy things. Like, put a bench here, take two t- table machines and squeeze them to the, like, whatever the fuck it might be. Just, like, making the gym your jungle gym. Just trying to find ways to feel shit. Holy fuck. And then, uh, you're just dumbing down the process. You're, you're overthinking it, right? It's as simple as that of, like, how do I run to the mirror there if I need to? Well, I'm just going to run there. I'm not going to be, like, okay, I'm going to start with my left or something. It's, like, I'm just going to run to the mirror. It's the same with lifting weights, right? Like, find where the tension should be, start moving. Get a tricep pump. And it shouldn't take you fucking four exercises to get a tricep pump. It's like insane. It should happen on the first set. And we should just be building the whole time. You should get to the point where, like, your arms are so pumped that you can't move them. Or that they feel like they're actually inhibited or, like, too pumped to even be comfortable, right? Like, a good bicep workout your bicep and brachialis are probably gonna be cramping for a while after you've done it because they're gonna be really fired up, right? So if we go to squeeze again, they wanna grab again, right?